Starting off the video with a declaration of war, you know it's going to be a good one. Today I'm looking at the Inca, and they're really interesting because when I'm playing them, I kind of feel like I'm playing Civ 6, right? They have these terraced farms that behave very similarly to districts in Civilization 6, and their unique unit is a slinger, which we all know is the first ranged unit in Civ 6. Overall, I kind of felt like I was almost merging Civilization 5 and 6 with what is undoubtedly yet again another very powerful civilization that I've slept on up until now. Thank you for recommending it to me in the comments. Let's jump in and discuss what the Inca do well, and in the background, boy, I've got a doozy of a gameplay for you. Without any further ado, let's do this. So for starters, and I should say these look absolutely beautiful, spoiler alert as I throw them up on screen now, these are the terrace farms. The terrace farms are the Incan's unique uh, building, but in this case it's a tile improvement. The reason why I say they behave a bit like districts is because they actually have an adjacency bonus to them. Not only are they incredibly strong, but you can also sort of plan ahead and get them to become even stronger. These terrace farms behave like normal farms, but they're much better because you can build them on hills and there's no fresh water requirement. So like me here in the desert, if you've got these sort of dry barren hills, it doesn't matter because you can build terrace farms on them. Now, players familiar with Civilization V will know that hills provide two production. They're very productive, but they don't really help a city grow because particularly these kind of hills provide no food. With the terrace farm, however, you uplift these tiles from just productive into food and production powerhouses. The terrace farm give one base yield of food, and then they are enhanced with um, civil service, with fresh water access, and without fresh water access, they're enhanced with fertilizer, which means by sort of the mid game, you'll be getting two food from them. But it gets better still, they actually have, and as I said at the start, a miscellaneous adjacency bonus, plus one food for every adjacent mountain tile. What that means is you can potentially get kind of crazy with these things. <laughs> I mean, I guess in an ideal world, you could be netting upwards of plus five food, but in reality, you're probably going to be able to get sort of a, maybe a plus three on average, sometimes a plus four. But what you're going to end up with with these terrace farms is not only some beautiful looking tile in Civilization 6, but also some highly productive and high food yield tiles at the same time. They're really strong, very, very powerful. I guess I should backtrack a little bit now that I've got my excitement out of the way for terrace farms and say, what do the Incans actually do? The Incans uh, basically have this incredible um, bond with hills. Okay, so for starters, uh, your land units, thanks to your unique ability, the Grand Andean Road, uh, will be able to move through hills t hill tiles as if they're flat land. What this means is you're very fast as the Incans, and you'll see this in the gameplay. My military units can just scream across hills as if they weren't there. It lets you travel across the map very, very quickly indeed. Uh, furthermore, uh, the Incans have, again, a wonderful ability with their terrain in that they pay no maintenance costs for improvements on hills, such as roads, for example, but all others as well. Uh, and they're actually 50% off elsewhere too. So what does it mean collectively? Well, it means you move quickly over hills, your improvements on them are free, and the rest of your improvements, particularly the roads that you build on non-hill tiles, are 50% off. This makes the Incans fast and powerful, particularly in the early game where they're supported by their unique unit. As I said at the beginning of the video, it's a slinger. It unfortunately, unlike in Civilization VI, it replaces the archer. Uh, you don't get to have both, but you do get to really enjoy quite a unique unit uh, in that, again, we see high agility and high mobility here. Not in its base movement or range or really its uh, damage. That doesn't change too much, down one point. But otherwise, this unit is exactly the same as the archer that it replaces, except for the fact that it has some really cool positive changes. Uh, so what this thing does well, and I tried to capture it in my gameplay, but because I play with quick combat on, it ended up just looking really glitchy and you couldn't really tell. But basically this unit has a chance to withdraw when it is uh, attacked by a melee attack from an enemy unit. Now it won't happen if there aren't any unoccupied tiles for it to withdraw into. So if you're surrounded by mountains or if you're surrounded by other units, it won't happen. 
but there is a chance that when a barbarian warrior or an enemy warrior goes in for a melee attack against your slinger, your slinger will jump back and take no damage. Really, really, really fun. Um, again, it is a little bit weaker than the archer, so if you tend to roll two archers, you might want to roll three slingers just to make up for that. But the fact that they're very agile, that they take advantage of your high movement as the Incans, and they have that ability to quickly bounce back away from trouble, it makes them a really fun and powerful unit. And you'll see, as I've used them in this gameplay, quite effective. Um, also at taking down cities if you've got enough of them rolling around, but you'll also easily take care of those annoying barbarians that are constantly a pain in my neck. Now let's move on to talking about some strategy and tips with the Incans that we've covered off what they already do. So in terms of victory conditions, in my opinion, the Incans, while not an S-tier sieve, they actually have um, some really powerful abilities that can sort of lead you almost in any direction. I think where they really excel is likely either domination or science. A reason why they excel at domination, as you'll see in this gameplay, their whole thing is really catered towards fast movement. And uh, when you combine that with their unique early game unit and the fact that you can get sort of online and moving a lot quicker than other sieves, I think they're particularly good at domination in this early game. I tend to not be an early game dominator, but I was really happy to take advantage of their skill sets in this video, well and truly. I also, I, I do think though, probably overall, uh, scientific victory is going to be the one that you're going to want to get. You can use your domination prowess perhaps in the early game to grab a capital or two, maybe take out a couple of foes, but I think that the scientific one is what you'll fall back on. Reason being, uh, largely due to the fact that the Terrace Farms ability allows you to build your cities incredibly tall and and productive. The fact that you have a hill start bias also means that you're probably going to be around some mountains. This allows you to build the observatory, which gives your cities plus 50% science if they're built adjacent to a mountain tile. Again, we can see some adjacency bonuses coming through here with the Incans. I like it. I like what they're putting down. Uh, the fact that every city that you found does reduce your overall uh, science output, or rather actually it increases your overall science costs in Civilization V since Brave New World, doesn't really matter so much to the Incans either. You can utilize the fact that you can easily move along hills to support your science with domination, as I say. Or, alternatively, as a third strategy, you can also make quite a bit of money as the Incans, largely thanks to the fact that you don't pay for those roads when they're on hills, and you pay a discounted cost whenever they're anywhere else. That's 50% off. Not buy one, get one free, but 50% off. Uh, typically, this will probably leave you with a little bit more gold, and again, if you've supported this with a bit of dominating in the early game, you're probably going to have a reasonably strong economy as the Incans, and indeed, I found that playing as them in this video. I could build these roads everywhere, take full advantage of having city connections, that's a, a full road between my cities, and really pay almost no maintenance costs to have them. You'll make a lot of money as the Incans without really even realising you're doing it, or at least that's what I was able to do. Viewer discretion, as always, is advised. <laughs> uh, in terms of of your social policies really because you're building next to mountains you're probably going to want to favor tradition and rationalism in this video i played around a bit with liberty and it, it was all right but i'd really strongly recommend tradition and rationalism reason being you're going to want tall uh highly productive big cities and that means that tradition tends to be a better policy tree for you as i say the fact that you spawn near mountains and tend to have really strong observatories is also really fundamental for going down that rationalism social policy tree and picking up all the science you can however i will note that commerce and liberty are reasonably good openers as well um, so if you want to take those, by all means, I don't think that's a bad idea. I do just think that tradition tends to be better with tall empires. As you move through into the later game, I feel like freedom is going to be the best ideology for you. But again, it will depend a little bit as you go through. Uh, in terms of religion, I didn't play a religious game here and I tend not to. Uh, the Incans don't really excel at faith generation, but it's still probably worth grabbing a religion if you can. If you can't find the time, however, I wouldn't worry about it. Some good pantheons to choose might be desert folklore, get Petra as your wonder, 
hilly desert areas i could i almost considered doing that here in this gameplay just because of my starting location a goddess of love and fertility rights are totally fine too i could totally see you picking them up and the last part of this video i just want to sort of cover off a few common mistakes that people make uh, as the incans or indeed mistakes that i made uh, first off i wouldn't put all of your eggs into the into your slinger basket they're great but like I say, they are a little bit weaker than the archers that they replace, so you will need to support them with something, whether that's a whole load more slingers or some military uh, melee units, the choice is yours. Uh, also, another one um, that I, I would recommend is that you probably don't want to set found your cities too far apart, okay? Uh, you should really only consider terrace farm potential when you're building your cities but also more importantly you want to be able to defend them as well the best thing that i've found that you can do is to find a good mountain range and settle your cities in and around it grow them tall and share it share in their sort of collective wealth yes your roads are free so you can get away with like i've done here taking over washington and building the world's longest road to it but by and large Keep yourself together, build up a tall, strong empire supported by highly food yielding and productive terrace farms, and I think you're going to have a great time playing as the Incans in Civilization V. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, why not leave a cheeky like rating? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.